Okay, big news today. Diamondback has released the sketches and the actual mock-up of the IO, the Diamondback IO. Now, very few people have seen this up close and personal, but it does look like a very attractive bike. They've done wind tunnel tests, they've done CFD, and they're making various claims, but this is a huge headline from the IO. The huge headline is that they've added vortex generators to the frame. These crazy looking orange dots are so-called vortex generators. They are actually being called by Diamondback weight control system. Now, do you believe that this weight control system is actually saving you time? Is it an aero benefit? They are producing various graphs to support that claim, but unfortunately none of those graphs are against their competitors. However, we can have a quick look at this bike in terms of its design. There's some really nice features. For example, they've got a fully integrated stem up front and that's custom design. The, the cables actually go down the side of the steerer, not through the steerer. They've got a special design in the steerer to help with that. They've got this storage unit, whether you need it or not, around the bottom bracket area which is kind of borrowed from various TT bikes. Obviously, their own TT bike, the Andean, has kind of done pioneered some work in this area. It's actually built around stock aero handlebars, the Zip SL70, which are uh, well known to be pretty good, pretty aero. So a little bit of comparison here. They compared their new IO against their classic road bike, that is the Podium and they say that it saves about 20% and they have measured that in terms of drag area CDA in the wind tunnel. They also compare it against their TT bike, their Serios, and they say it's only, only 10% slower than the Serios. Now there are various different setup options here. And as I say, you can never really tell when you just rely on one manufacturer's own claims against their own bikes. So we're gonna have to wait and see. One thing I did notice, however, is the price point is not too bad. Well, these things are always expensive on launch, aren't they? But the complete build apparently is going to come in under $4,000 with a SRAM Force 1 by group set. And the top end is going to be around $10,000 for the Durace Di2. And that's with the NV SES 5.6 wheels and possibly power cranks as standard. Now, you wait ages for one bus to come along. And at the same time, two come along. What's that all about? Well, we've got the KTM Revelator lease just launched at Eurobike, and it was also at the UK Bike Show. I did get to have a look at this up close and personal. And is it just me, or does this share a lot of the features from the Diamond Bike IO? If you have a look, it's got a very similar integrated aero cockpit. It's got a kind of compact design, although the gaps are not as filled with the KTM Revelator lease. It's got uh, lowered rear stays, which have been tested by Diamondback. They say it's a compromise. No stays, they say, no stays at all, are super aero, but a little unstable for lateral stability. High stays, conventional road stays, are not very aero, but very, very stable. So they say the best compromise for road are these lowered stays, and obviously KTM agree. Now KTM allow you actually to work with any bar similar to Diamondback and that's quite a nice feature. And the way KTM have dealt with the cables is actually to have these inbuilt cable runs, these plastic inbuilt cable runs through the steerer and through the frame, which I think is nice. But what that means is in order to extend your reach or your height, um, beyond your normal stack height, for example, you have to have these custom made spaces, which of course they do supply. Now, what we don't know from KTM yet are the prices, but we do know the frame weight from KTM. It's around about one kilo for the main frame and 400 for the forks, but we don't know the weight information from Diamondback. So we await that with interest. Now, as much as I like the Diamondback IO, it looks like a, the child of a TT bike and a road bike. I've got a couple of slight concerns. One, I'm just slightly concerned the stack height is a little bit high on this bike, which means it may be very difficult to get into a super low tuck aero position. And secondly, what's going on with the seat post, guys? Is it me or is this like a super thin needle type seat post, which is, you know, like tiny, looks, ah, uh, it clashes on this bike. In the context of these oversized tube widths, and by the way, we don't know whether these are UCI legal now, but I suspect they probably are, given UCI's relaxed three to one rule. But in the context of these 
frame width. This is actually a normal size seat post. Looks very odd to me. Let's have a bit of fun with Photoshop and let's see if we can correct this seat post now. Okay, that's the seat post corrected. Let's go back into Photoshop and do a few comparisons of the geometry to see whether that stack height really is a concern. I've pulled up a kind of standard stock image from the side here. Now this is done with a quite a long lens. There's relatively little distortion on here, which is quite good. Let's put a little dot over the front wheel axis. Can you see it there, that little dot that's over the front wheel axis? Now that's gonna help us with uh, lining up a comparison here. So first of all, if we look at the geometry, what is striking? To me, the stack height, the front stack height, measured from the bottom bracket here, seems pretty tall at the front, and that's actually a recipe to be non-aero, unless you can have a really negative drop on your stem. Being really high at the front is not necessarily the best idea. However, it is comfortable, I'll give you that. It's got quite a steep seat tube angle. Do you notice here the seat tube angle is well, I can read off the specs. From a 52 centimeter frame, the seat tube angle is actually at 75.8, so almost 76 degrees, which is pretty much kind of a TT bike geometry or a long way towards a TT. And the wheelbase arguably is fairly narrow. You get a sense that it's compacted. You know, they've taken out all the gaps, so it's kept the wheelbase pretty narrow, and that's probably a good thing for Aero. Now here's the clever bit, guys. Let's take the same stock studio photo of the lease, the KTM Revelator lease, and superimpose it above the Diamondback IO, because I think there are a lot of similarities here. So here comes the lease, guys. So now I've lined up the lease with the wheel size, 700C wheel size, and I've also lined it up through axle front center point. And what do we notice about the lease? Well, comparing like for like, so 52 centimeter, the frame size is slightly different, but they do share 52 centimeter frame. What we can say from the lease is that the lease is, yes, slightly longer in wheelbase. Actually, the 52, the lease wheelbase is 999 compared to 981. We can also see the stack height is pretty high on the lease. I wouldn't want to separate them, but in terms of stack height, yes, they're both pretty high. You'll notice the lease seat tube is pretty much parallel to the IO seat tube. So they're both pretty steep. Officially, the lease seat tube angle at the 52 centimeter is 76 as opposed to 75.8, so they're, they're pretty close. And the stack height for the lease is officially 542, so very high. A rule of thumb, guys, is that the stack height in centimeters is pretty much the same as the overall road bike height in centimeters. So if it's a 52 centimeter frame, you actually expect on a road bike the front stack height to be around 52. Now let's look at another bike. Let's look at the Venge VIS. Now this is the non-disc version. Now we get a sense that the seat tube angle is pretty slack in the Specialized. Well, really it's normal in the Specialized VIS, i.e. it's around about 73 degrees, where it's around about, as we've already seen, 75 to 76 in the other bikes. We can also see that the wheelbase is pretty tight. Actually, it's even tighter. It's actually 970 millimeters, 97 centimeters. And in terms of the stack height, the stack height is 526. So with the VIS, it's slightly lower in the front, i.e. conventional. So there's an interesting three-way comparison, guys, between the Diamondback IO, the KTM Revelator Lease, and the Venge VIS, looking at the geometry, wheelbase, and stack height. Three important things for looking at aerodynamics on the bike. 
All right, guys, that was my comparison of the Diamondback IO versus the KTM Revelator lease. The jury's out on both of these bikes until we get some field testing, until somebody does head-to-head -head comparison in a wind tunnel in the same conditions or chung test outside under very similar conditions. What do you think? Give me a comment below. As always, stay safe out there. Have a great ride. See you next time. Mm -hmm.